Welcome to Rich Conversations. This is another one of our weekly guided reflection sessions where we take about 40 to 50 minutes out of our day to just think more about our lives. You know, what's going on? How are we feeling? What's ahead? So that moving forward, we can be more precise and clear. And uh, like other sessions, we start with five minutes of breathing. How about that? Breathing. So I'm gonna set a timer here for five minutes and uh, we're on the farm in nature. It's summer. Life is good, isn't it? But it can get better and that's what we're gonna work on today. And all these things that we're doing will enhance our experience in life overall, our relationships, everything. So five minutes, here we go. We're just gonna sit here and breathe in and out. This is one of the most difficult things for people to do is just sit in silence and just breathe in, breathe out. So we're, we're going to do that for about five minutes. And if any thoughts come to mind, just let them pass. We're not worried about it right now. You have the rest of the day to worry about it. <laughs> we're just going to be here and breathe. you can try to find moments of your day to be in nature and just breathe within nature
All right, that was five minutes. Welcome back, especially if you uh, fell asleep. <laughs> All right. First question, as we uh, do this exercise of a weekly guided reflection session, is what are we grateful for? It's always a wonderful place to start. What are we grateful for? Now, there are infinite things to be grateful for, so, you know, just think of a few that are on your mind. found this notebook today <laughs> through our journal and uh what we use for weekly guided reflection sessions and uh because i moved from chicago to the farm in wisconsin and uh couldn't find it anywhere and then my mom was like hey are you looking for this i was like oh my gosh <laughs> there it is uh probably about three-fourths more than like three-fourths done there are 190 pages in here and we're at 168 and then we digitalize them when we're done therefore if anything happens to the physical copy we have a digital copy Yeah, but there's so many things to be grateful for. So just write about a few that are just at the forefront of your mind, you know? You know, what, what comes to your mind when we ask this question, right? Should learn the sounds of each species of bird. Try to, try to listen closely. Nature is really something. If you if you pause and you just observe nature, you can learn so much. And how often do we do that, you know? Why don't we use that for our second question? When was the last time we were in nature? We really immersed ourselves and gave our attention to nature and what's going on. You know, when was that? What was that like?
Got a oak tree in our shot. <laughs> the last the last recorded, I was I like to find interesting, you know, spots and visuals. Oh, there's a robin over there. This is a good healthy oak tree. This gotta be 150 years old. Yeah, the biggest biggest sem uh biggest oak tree that I know of is in the, the cemetery in town. Might be might be around like four hundred years. I wish there were more trees like that still around. Um what happened was there were all these big trees and when the settlers came, they used those trees to build cabins and barns, things like that. So you can, like in the barns, you'll, you'll see like a, like 16 inch wood panels and then 12 and eight. Um, so the bigger ones are older. You can't just grow, can't just plant a tree and then it <laughs> accelerates its growth for 400 years and then you get to enjoy that. Uh, planting trees is something you're really giving to, to others and, and giving to people and animals that don't exist yet, you know? Oak trees. So sensitive though. They look tough, but they're, they're kind of sensitive. So one question I was thinking about, what's your favorite story? Now this could be, you know, anything from uh, um, movies or comic books or children's stories. I'm thinking in particular of children's stories. I've been really um, exploring stories, children's stories. More like um, simple stories that share a lesson. Thinking of the little engine that could um, Good one is Jonathan Livingston Siegel. I really like that. Um, in New York, in Brooklyn, they have these like stoops. Is that what you would call it? It's like stairs that go up to the brownstone or whatever. So you're walking around Brooklyn and very often you'll find just like boxes of books or boxes of things. And it's just kind of a community um, giving away, sharing. And the last time I was in New York, there was a copy of Jonathan Livingston Siegel. And a lot of times with books, I feel like it's kind of like you're supposed to have it. Like it's, it's, it's like a sign in a way. Actually, so those last ones I mentioned were both from Brooklyn on separate trips. Jonathan Livingston Siegel, when I was uh, in New York in July, and then I think the little engine that could was, I think it was this recent one in March. I try not to bring books back from New York anymore so my suitcase isn't weighed down. But if there's one that sticks out, something that like really comes to me, 
I'm about that. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> the little engine that could. Okay, what is this telling me? <laughs> so what's your favorite story? And why? You know, maybe it could be, uh, you know, your parents read it to you as a child. Or when you were a kid, you really found inspiration in these characters that you read. Or now, maybe you just like watching every Marvel um, story, DC Comics story. But yeah, I've been, I've been having fun with stories. As humans, we love stories. We're all about stories. And I've really gravitated towards that concept and idea recently. Um, I wrote a story called The Boy in the Rocket Ship that we're working on and we're gonna put out in August. And I'm, I'm so energized with just like sharing the story. And then someone will be like, oh, what is it about? And, and, I, and I share it. Do you wanna hear the story? <laughs> so the boy in the rocket ship. So there once was this, this community and there's this large, large tower and there are a bunch of young boys and girls. And at a certain age, they get to climb the tower because the adults tell them there's treasure at the very top. So this group of young boys and girls, they are all of age, ready to climb. They get to the tower, get to the top. So they start and they start going up and they get to the first levels. And they get all this treasure. But there's one boy that just stayed on the ground because he looked up at the tower and he was like, I could just build an elevator, get to the top, then I won't have to climb. So he stays on the ground, starts building this elevator. Meanwhile, the boys and girls keep climbing, keep climbing ladders, they get to the, the next levels. So there's more treasure and they're so happy. They have all these smiles on their faces and the boy is just on the ground, just working on his elevator. <laughs> and then the boys and girls, they climb higher. There are more levels, more treasures. Even happier. The boy's on the ground, still working on his elevator. And his mother comes. And she says, I don't like to see you struggle so much. You know, you can climb like everybody else too. And he cries in his mother ar mother's arms. She's hugging him and says, no. Something inside me tells me not to climb. So the boys and girls, they continue to climb, but now all of a sudden they're losing some of their energy and their, their smiles that they had start to become frowns and they're less excited, less enthusiastic. Meanwhile, the boy, all of a sudden, he started to make some progress on this elevator. So he's putting together, okay, okay. And the boys and girls, all of a sudden, they, they stopped climbing. So they stopped climbing the tower. There are many, many levels to go. And they're sitting there with their treasures. Meanwhile, the boy, he's almost done with the elevator. And he looks up and he's thinking, an elevator can only take me up and down. It can only take me to the top of the tower. I want to go everywhere and anywhere. So he puts his elevator aside and he starts building a rocket ship. He takes what he learned, the concepts he learned with an elevator, applies it and builds a rocket ship right away. So then he's looking at the tower and he sees all the, the boys and girls just stopped on their levels with their treasures how they're not smiling anymore. And he thinks, why not go to the top together? 
I have, I have built enough room in this rocket ship. We can all go together. Let's go to the top and get the treasure. So he launches his rocket ship and he stops at every level. And he says, come on in, let's go to the top. And then they're all excited. Everybody's excited, right? And they start bringing their treasures. And the boy says, no, you gotta leave your treasures behind. And they're like, what? He's like, yeah, they're only gonna weigh us down. Let's go. So then they ditch their treasure. Everybody gets in the rocket ship. They go to the levels, pick up everybody. They get to the top. And then there's a treasure chest. And there's, a, there's this like light beam on the treasure chest. And the boy goes up to it. And the others are, are behind. He opens the treasure chest. And there's a piece of paper. So he reads it aloud. Congratulations. You've made it to the top of the tower. And since you're here, you know that the treasure has been inside you the whole time. So the boy laughs, he puts, he puts the paper back in the treasure chest. Everybody's confused, but he's like, all right, let's go, forward. So they get in the rocket ship and they blast off again. The end. The boy in the rocket ship. So that's the story we've uh, working on and Ken Ferguson is illustrating it. I'm so energized by it. I wanna just keep writing more stories like that. So what was your favorite story? It's a lot of what we have and within society, everything is storytelling. And lately I've really uh, got a hold of that really inspired and energized. What, what kinds of stories can we tell? How many can we tell? This next question. What's your biggest idea? I want you to write down what you think is your biggest idea. You know, you can keep it to yourself or feel free to, you know, let me know in the comments or tweets or whatever, a website, email. What are our biggest ideas? I think, and this is what I'm going to test coming up, I think it's easier to achieve big ideas, to make big ideas real than small ideas. I think big ideas are easier to execute than small ideas. So take some time and really think about that and maybe even test it for yourself, you know? This big idea, what if it's actually easier to execute than smaller ideas I have, more common ideas?
what would create more peace of mind for us? So let's think about peace of mind. Imagine, visualize life with peace of mind, a moment with peace of mind. What, what is in the way of creating that? You know, it might, it might be something specific. It could be kind of general. But think about it. Reflect on it. That is heaven. Peace of mind, just even kill. So what potential obstacle is in the way? What actions do we need to take to create that peace of mind, to create an environment where peace of mind can be more frequent? Peace of mind, so valuable. Peace of mind. So something kind of adjacent to that would be what's our environment look like with peace of mind? Like what kind of environment are we in when we're visualizing peace of mind, right? What kind of environment can we create that enables that peace of mind easier, more natural, more as the default, you know? So when you're visualizing that, when you're conceptualizing peace of mind, like, what does that environment look like? How can you create that for you? It's something I'm, my mind, since I moved, it's like, now you have a, a new space and you're starting over. What is it going to look like? What is it going to look like so that it's the best designed and laid out space for your well-being. You know, so what what does that environment look like? What's in it? What you know, what, what colors, what, what furniture, what objects, what smells, what's the lighting like? Is it really bright? Is it dim? Is it adjustable? Um, there's all these different elements 
So think about what you enjoy most and what brings you the most peace. Take some time to note that. And if it's not even in your own space, think about spaces you've been in that you've felt this way. You know, what were they like? What elements did you like that were involved? Yeah, environments are very influential on our peace of mind and well-being. What's something we could organize better in our lives? Whether it's something physical, materials, or on our mind. You know, like what, what doesn't have a place right now? And so it's, it's unorganized wherever it is. You haven't quite found a home for it yet or a better way. You know, think about something that might be causing stress or disrupting our peace of mind inhibiting our peace of mind you know how so how can we better organize that category or that thing
his son is like <laughs> directly. Uh. Okay, we have uh, maybe like a few left, a few questions to ask. Let's let's think about sports, sporting activities. You know, a sporting activity or organized sports that we enjoy watching, participating in, something we're looking forward to coming up. Um, let's think and write about that. You know, maybe, uh, you know, like soccer is going on right now. Baseball, the Olympics coming up. You know, or are you interested in, you know, recreational activities at cookouts, parties, summer places that you go? Yeah, the, it's really valuable to understand sports, what's going on in sports, culture. It really enables you to connect with other people um, from different backgrounds. It's fun. It's humans competing, you know? Great stories can emerge from sports. So many, yeah. So what sports are we looking forward to whether it's as a spectator or a participant. And then, what are you energized for this upcoming week? Whatever you have coming up this week, like what is something that you know will make you feel alive and present and just happy to be participating, being there, doing it? And lastly, this is like one of my favorite questions. What are you curious about recently? It could be about in your life. It could be about a subject, a topic, relationships, anything. You're only limited by your imagination.
that will about do it for today's session. This has been our weekly guided reflection session um, where we do this every week. And by just taking more time, more, more time out of our day to just think about our lives. What's going on? How are we feeling? We can really improve our, our clarity and the precision in our actions moving forward. And be with each other, which is great. So thank you for being here. We'll see you next week.